This is the Sixers team that I know. This is the Sixers team that I predicted would get all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. This is the Sixers team that I recognize. What is going on, y'all? Five Sports Talk. Back at it with another video talk. And, of course, some NBA here to talk about the NBA playoffs. Game 2 between the Nets and the Sixers. And we saw the real Philadelphia 76ers show up here in a dominating, dominating performance over the Nets, 145-123. to 123. Um, Joel Embiid, 23-10. and 10. Ben Simmons uh, had the biggest stat line, though, with a triple-double, 18 points, 10 rebounds, and 12 assists. Tobias Harris finally got off the schneid and put up 19. Jimmy Butler had a quiet game, but they didn't need him. Only had seven points. Mike Scott, fit big off the bench with 15. This is what I'm talking about with the Sixers, man. Because, look. Game one, they looked bad. I got it. The Nets came in and they stole one. But remember, I predicted the Sears to go to five games, okay? So I knew the Nets were going to get at least one game, okay? I, I did give them that respect. But here's my thing. Today, I finally saw, and this happened after halftime because the Sixers were not playing that well. It was a one-point game at halftime. And then after halftime, everything changed. The confidence level, Joel Embiid, Every time he saw Jared Allen, it was a shark smelling blood in the water. He was like, give me the ball. Jared Allen can't guard me. And he couldn't. Joel Embiid bucket after bucket after bucket. And it was just over. Joel Embiid, when he said he's the most unguardable player in the NBA, I'm telling you, folks, he's not lying. Joel Embiid, outside of Harden, Curry, Giannis, who you can make the arguments for, he is the most unguardable player in the NBA, maybe KD too. But you get my point here. Joel Embiid at his best. I shouldn't disrespect LeBron, by the way. Joel Embiid at his best is about as unguardable as it gets. And against this Brooklyn team, who I told you guys in my prediction video, they get destroyed by big men on the interior. Joel Embiid took advantage, dominated performance. And then the, the biggest thing was the confidence, okay? Because in game one, this looked like a team with four all-stars, that never played together. And honestly, they only played 10 regular season games together. So that's not enough time to develop chemistry. But now you're seeing with the chemistry. And again, I don't think they're, they're fully capable of... They haven't shown what they're fully capable of. Because again, Jimmy didn't have a good game. JJ Reddick didn't have a good game. So imagine all five guys clicking. Okay, look out. Okay, this is the Sixers team that I was looking for. Ben Simmons... Uh, finally shut up the haters. My, my timeline on Twitter was very quiet with no Ben Simmons slander for at least one night. But trust me, as soon as he has a bad game, they're going to be back at it again. But Ben Simmons, again, at this point, if you're expecting him to shoot, you're expecting a unicorn to pop up. It's not going to happen, folks. Ben Simmons did what he does best, which is facilitate, uh, grab rebounds, uh, get to the puck, bucket, get in the paint, be able to create mismatches, and play good defense, okay? And that's what I'm expecting from Ben Simmons. I'm done with the whole shooting thing for right now because, again, you're not going to develop a shot in the middle of the playoffs, okay? So he played his role to a T. And thank you, Tobias Harris, for finally showing up and being aggressive. You took, like, six shots in game one. I needed to see more offense, and I did that. Love seeing the bench go off as well with Mike Scott uh, putting up 15 points. I love that. The Sixers bench has been a weakness for them. But overall, here's my take. The confidence that they needed, I believe they have now, and now you're going to see this team to start to click. Here's my bold prediction. And again, this should not be that bold, actually, because I predicted this in the number of games. I don't believe the Nets are winning another game in this year. So here goes my preview for game three. I believe the Sixers win game three. And again, I believe they win uh, every other game this series because I don't believe the Nets will win another one. The Nets shot the lights out in the first half. That's the only reason they were in this game. D'Angelo Russell, after that, and after the Nets came crashing back down to earth with the shooting, you saw they were getting blown off the floor. Um, this Nets team, they can't guard the interior. We know that. But again, if their shot is not falling, they're not very good. Outside of D'Angelo Russell, you don't have too many offensive weapons. I like Spencer Dinwiddie off the bench. He's okay. But if your starting lineup consists of Rodians, Krugs, you know, Damari Carroll, who's okay, Joe Harris, who's a, who's a spot-up shooter, there's not that much offense. And again, this team is inferior to the Sixers. So I don't want to give the Sixers a lot of credit because they should be beating the Nets. They are a better team. But point being is uh, the Nets already won by making the playoffs, okay? So my point really here is 
I hope to see more of this from the Sixers. Game three, I'm looking for Embiid to absolutely dominate again in the paint. I think now you're going to collectively see all four guys play well, and then the top is going to come off, and they're going to just get rolling and hopefully close the series out in five games. I know that seems like an overreaction from one game compared to the other, but I truly believe this version of the Sixers is the version that you are going to see moving forward. I hope I'm right about that. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below if you agree with me or disagree with me. As always, thanks for watching.